just adore fountain pens to do my lettering, to do sketching and drawing, and just to do my daily writing. So when it came to including a pen in my art supply collection, I knew it had to be a fountain pen, and I knew it had to be something that would make you as equally obsessed as I am. And because I'm an artist, I want a pen that allows me to put a wide range of inks inside it to use. I want to be able to use it on top of watercolour and other art materials without fear that it will clog up. And this is the incredible pen. Well, there's three of them at the moment. They come with the pen itself, cap of course, some ink cartridges for you to load into them and an ink converter. So inside you're going to find some instructions that will remind you how to fill and insert both the cartridge and the ink converter. But I'm going to show you quickly uh, how to do that. You just take a universal ink cartridge, pop it inside and off you go. You can write to your heart's content. <laughs> just screw the pen back together. Um, put the lid back on and then give it a couple of little taps. You don't have to do this, but if you're like me, you're in a hurry and you want to get down to using everything quickly, it just helps get the ink flowing. The ink that comes with it is water soluble, so you can add water uh, on a paintbrush or a water brush and that will activate it. You can also choose your own ink and uh, just slide the little slide up, pop the ink cartridge in the ink itself or uh, put it inside the nib and then draw it up with the uh, nib on. I prefer this method. And yeah, just slide up, you've got the ink inside, pop it back into your pen and off you go. And the nib on the incredible pen is so versatile, it looks good too, but it's really going to allow you to have a lot of fun with your lettering, with your daily writing and using it for sketching. At the moment, there are three colorways in the incredible pen. They all have the same nib. The nib has a little bit of flexibility to it, which means you do get a variety of line, but it's robust enough that even for a beginner, it's going to be easy to use. And for a more advanced pen aficionado, you're going to really enjoy this medium nib. As I mentioned before, they do fit just the standard universal cartridge, but I do have sets of bright colored cartridges for you to use in the pens. And if you have another fountain pen that accepts just the standard cartridge, you can use these in your other pens as well. You can swap between the cartridges uh, before they're fully used up. Just keep in mind storing them. Uh, you will need to keep them upright, potentially seal them somehow. Uh, it's not what I would recommend. It certainly won't hurt the pen in any way. Now let's talk about the inks that you can load into the ink converter. Basically any fountain pen friendly ink is going to be fine. So I'm going to load my incredible inks in here as a demo for you. These are a vivid dye based ink and perfectly safe for fountain pens. Acrylic inks, inks with shellac in them, inks that say they're not fountain pen friendly. Uh, an ink that could clog your pen, they, those inks, no, don't, don't put them in your fountain pen. If you are going to go rogue and just willy-nilly try inks, have fun with it. It might work while you're there just as you filled it and off you go, but it could clog your pen if you leave it sitting there. So if you are going to try other types of inks um, that with shellac in them or inks that dry to a permanent status. Hmm, I would say use them and then flush your pen out. So fill it with the ink, do what you need to do, and then take it out of the converter and flush water through the pen. Just make sure it's nice and clean. Keep in mind, this is, yes, an incredible pen, but it's not Wonder Woman, she can't do everything. 
So what I've done is create my own ink color with two of my incredible inks in the background there while I've been talking about pens. Um, I've used a little bit of a color called Tinsel, which is a lovely soft brown that's nice for building skin tones and a beautiful dark rich brown, which is again beautiful for building skin tones as well. But mixing them to the two together, I get more of a sepia color. I'm using I've used the cartridge and I've drawn up that ink into there and then I'm ready to put it into my incredible pen and get drawing with it and with that excess ink I'm actually going to use a pipette put that into one of my fine liner bottles so that I can keep having more creative fun with that later and if I really love this mixture, this color, uh, I can always label this bottle and just keep it aside and have it there to reload my pen as soon as I've finished using up all of this ink. And just as a cute distraction, the one of the colors I've used is a color called Tinsel. And this is who it's named after, my little old Pomeranian Tinsel. Isn't she cute? So let's get down to using the incredible pens. I've got a um, little book here, a little journal that I've made in one of my in-person workshops. I've got a beautiful quote from uh, this book that I want to write on this paper. The paper is a cold press watercolor paper and it is covered in incredible ink and acrylics. I've used my jelly plate, um, I've used all sorts of different other pens, other sprays, all sorts of different things on here. So it is a true, lovely mixed media surface that has a little bit of texture, not the kind of thing that you would ordinarily use a fountain pen on. And this can be, fountain pens can be very, very expensive and they're usually thought of as a delicate instrument, something, yes, it may be mightier than the sword, but physically it might not be all that strong. But that is what makes the incredible pen a little bit different is that it's it's quite good for this. Now it's not going, can you dra drag it along on the bitumen on the road? No, that's going to damage it. Uh, but <laughs> in your artwork, as long as everything is dry and not sticky or gooey or tacky, you're going to have a very high chance of success and uh, almost guarantee that you're not going to destroy your pen. But as you can see, I'm happily writing. I put this in fast forward because watching someone write might not be that fun, especially watching me write. I am certainly no calligrapher. Uh, I'm certainly no letterer, but I do like to express myself in the written word by adding quotes and things, especially to my journals. And I like the way that not only um, how it looks a fountain pen but also the way it feels as I'm writing. I think it makes me um, letter a little better. I also like just doodling with my incredible pens and something that I often start a creative session off with is just doodling on pages in my journal that are already existing. Now because I design art supplies I have a lot of swatches and art supply tests going on in my journals and so many of my pages start from that. And on this page, I've got, uh, I'm testing uh, mermaid markers and incredible inks, if in case you're interested. And I've just put a little bit of the turquoise cartridge uh, with one of the incredible inks just with some little scale prints. I'm just doing some little bit of doodling at the top of the page. And over time, all these little <laughs> bits of doodling just add extra layers, extra little meanings to my pages. Uh, also, it just warms me up, just gets me ready, gets ideas flowing and lets the creative muse know that I'm situated and that I'm ready to start creating. Here I've got a sketch that I started with some of my magic wands, which are a beautiful pigmented soft colored pencil. I'm working inside the Jane Davenport watercolor paper journal. And I'm, again, I'm just doodling. I had a little bit of a bird shape there. I'm just adding to the bird and letting things softly evolve. What I find really fascinating about art supplies is not just how everything looks different, like all art supplies are different, 
but the way that I hold them makes them makes me draw differently as well and I, I love observing that in myself anyway oh I'm also adding a little bit of water I've got a water brush here one of my Jane Davenport ink brushes it's the same as the mermaid marker it's got a beautiful lovely nylon tip uh, with it's like a little tiny brush you fill it with water and I've activated that ink just to add a little natural shadow and now I'm just doodling again uh, little line pens and this I think is the strength of the <laughs> incredible pen is that it just allows you to do all of these different things with just one pen so if I'm in the mood for using incredible pens which is often they're the only pens that I use but what I do have is different inks in multiple pens so there are three different designs three colorways at the moment but you can add stickers or washi tape or something just to denote what inks you have inside your multiple pens. And the incredible pens are really, really lovely for sketching. So I'm just going to sit out the front of my studio and I am going to sketch the view from there of the beautiful green trees and the rolling hills. Hello. <laughs> Trying to film yourself sketching. So easy. But sketching on plein air or urban sketching with the incredible pen is just lovely. Well, with any fountain pen, it's wonderful. But oh, these pens are just great because they're made for you to experiment with your different ink colors and have as much fun as possible to be as robust as they can uh, and also to be at a, a value price so that you're not afraid to use them uh, believe me fountain pens can be very expensive very and worth every penny but uh, am I going to write on watercolor and draw on top of paint and other things with my fancy Italian uh, fountain pen no I'm not I'm gonna save that for nice smooth uh, fountain friendly I'm putting little quotation marks around that paper whereas the incredible pen is an artist's tool I want you to experiment with it I want you to play with it and have fun including it in your artwork in your art journals always with the art supplies in my collection I want these things to add to your inspiration to your ooh, creative outreach anyway <laughs> we're going to take the art journal back inside I've got my incredible pens just neatly arranged I'll take you a photo of them and I've done that little bit of sketching outside so you could have gone to a coffee shop or traveled or sat outside like I did just to have a nice little sketching session and then you can come back and you can add water and activate some of those lines you don't have to activate all of them but activating some of them just can add something to your artwork um, and you don't have to do it straight away you can do it in a couple of weeks time it is a dye based stink that comes with the incredible pens and that comes in the incredible pen cartridges I've also loaded in there the incredible ink that I've mixed as well and that also is going to stay uh, water soluble but as with all water soluble things if you want maximum reactivation then reactivate when everything is fresh now I'm adding a little bit of life to her face with highlights with one of my story time paint pens just on the lips and on the eyes and I sort of feel like she needs a little bit more doodaring and doodling in the hair region. <laughs> Look how nice this is to sketch with. Oh, so nice. So I'm actually mixing two colors. I've got the turquoise and the black happening. Just going over it with my water brush. Everything's very loose and free. Oh, she needs my eyebrows. And of course, I've put this in fast forward when I'm drawing. I just take my time. If your pen starts skipping, uh, or if you think that anything is the ink isn't flowing first of all open it up and check that there's ink in the cartridge 
Uh, it may be that you've used all your ink up. And as with all fountain pens, it's not completely airtight. It's a fairly simple structure. And your ink can evaporate if it's been sitting there for a long time. So the lesson there is use your pens. Get lots of stuff happening on your paper. So make sure you've got ink in there. And if you don't, refill it or put in another cartridge. And the other thing might be it could be um, blocked up maybe with a little fiber of paper it's a quite a it's a very simple system like i said uh, so just swish it out in water um, get some water into the converter and push that through if you're really having trouble if ink can't flow uh, if you drop the pen uh, or are too rough with it you can damage the nib as well but treat it with respect and use as intended and you will have many many delightful years of use with your beautiful incredible pens now to finish this particular page i'm just adding a little bit of silver acrylic from one of my collections and what started off as a very very loose little sketch with magic wand colored pencils has now turned into a little statement about how i feel about my home and where i live and what it is that i have on my mind I hope you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to see more you can subscribe to my youtube channel or check out janedavenport.com where i teach online workshops you can see all of my different art supplies that i create and where to find them plus tons of ideas on how to use them if you're using any of the jane davenport collection to create with i'd love to see it I have a Facebook group. If you look for Jane Davenport Mixed Media, you will find the Facebook group. You can join and you can share what you've created with the supplies. We've got giveaways and all sorts of fun creative prompts going on there as well. I hope to see you soon.